Welcome. I've uh, wanted to learn the Rust programming language for a while, and the best way for me to learn something is by working on a small project. So that's what this series of videos will cover. The tool I want to create is inspired by a challenge encountered at work regarding StatsD metrics. So let's walk through the problem first, and then we'll dive into Rust, likely in the second video. To start, let's use Mermaid um, to visualize the, the scenario while I talk. Mermaid is pretty awesome. Okay, so here's the scenario. Say you have a load balancer and three web servers that sit behind it. Uh, with a web app, one measurement that's often helpful to keep track of is the number of logins per minute. And a lightweight, a lightweight way to track this information is by using StatsD metrics. It's much lighter than having each web server attempt to increment a counter in a database. So here's how it works. Your web app code is modified to send a UDP message to a central StatsD server whenever a login occurs. The message body is real simple. It says there's a login event, and here is what that message might look like. So that there is a StatsD message. If you don't know what StatsD is, it was created by Etsy um, more than a decade ago, just as a light way to have a bunch of servers report data, um, and then you can store them in a database, as we will see when we walk through the rest of the diagram. So this basically is the metric name or the measurement name, users.logins. And country is a tag. Right now we know that this visitor logged in from the US. And the host, in this case, we'll just say that this is the web, a web server with the name of web host A. One is, well, actually C at the end means this is a counter metric. In StatsD, there's four different types of metrics. We're only concerned with the counters right now, and I don't really want to go into all the details of StatsD. But so for this, for these purposes, we have one login. That's what the one means. Increment the counter. In this case, the counter is actually um, users.logins with the country of US tag and the host of that. So the StatsD server, when it receives this message, would increment the counter with that exact string, all the highlighted text. That's the counter name that it would increment. So that means there's a, a different counter for each web host. We've got web host B through Z and a different counter for each uh, country that, that it receives. And that's just so you can crunch numbers later. Um, so we don't miss data. We preserve the, the unique tag values along with the counts. Okay. The uh, StatsD project is pretty easy to find. If you just search for Etsy StatsD, look for the GitHub, and there you go. Here's a sample metric here. Very simple counter called foo. All right, let's continue. So back to Mermaid. Our web servers emit the login metric that we just saw. It goes to a StatsD server and um, the StatsD server queues up the messages that it receives. And then every 10 seconds, you know, this is a setting that you can change, but by default, every 10 seconds, it does aggregation. In this case, it will add the login counts together. And then our architecture includes saving to a time series database like InfluxDB. So it would queue them up every 10 seconds. It would do the aggregation, summing all the counts. And then those aggregated metrics, it would flush and save to InfluxDB every 10 seconds. Okay, so if your site is high traffic and your code emits many different types of metrics, a single StatsD server might not, you know, might get overwhelmed with the volume. So perhaps it's not able to queue up and process something like 100,000 metrics in a timely fashion every 10 seconds. It's a very real reality very real possibility. In this case, so it might be a good idea to proxy and split the data 
to more than one StatsD server. And that's what our project is going to do. So here's what that architecture might look like. Paste in the mermaid data. All right. So the web servers still emit their login metrics. They go instead to the StatsD proxy, which will parse the metrics as much as it needs to and figure out which downstream or backend StatsD server it needs to send to. So it would shard these with a sharding function somehow, according to the, the string here before the increment value and the metric type. And then it would determine that all these metrics may, might be sharded to StatsD server 2. And maybe all the host A ones end up getting to getting sent to StatsD server 1. It kind of depends on our sharding hashing function. Okay, so that's the goal. We're going to be implementing the StatsD proxy in Rust. Um, so here's the high-level plan. We need to listen for UDP messages. We need to parse them. And there, there may be more than one metric um, in the UDP message. The StatsD protocol allows that. So we will have to be, we'll have to split on new lines. So then we will parse the format and maybe, maybe we'll look into using regular expressions just as a way to learn regex in Rust. Um, or maybe, maybe in like phase three, we'll write the parsing logic by hand since honestly, the statsd protocol is pretty simple and we could likely do a pretty good job. There are really only a couple of, um, things that I think we'd need to keep track of, namely um, whether we've hit a comma and thus have completed the measurement name, and then subsequent commas are tag value, you know, tag key pairs, key value pairs. And then once we get to the colon, we'll know we've reached the end of the uh, unique unique metric name. I don't really know what the right terminology to use there is, but basically once we get to the colon, we know that we can just start our hashing sharding. And um, yeah, so really just a couple things to look for, commas and a colon. So I think the logic could be pretty simple if we decide to write it ourselves. All right, so then we're gonna normalize the StatsD metric data. So tags might be sent in an inconsistent order. So it's possible that the code may send the um, host tag before the country tag, in which case we need to be really careful on how we attempt to hash or shard with this string. So that's why we're going to normalize it. We're going to ensure we'll pull off this first part, and then we'll pull off each subsequent tag key and value. And really all we really need to do, I think, is ensure that we sort a, the, our list of tags. So that way country is always, if country and host are present in the tag string or the metric string, that country is always first. So we'll parse it, put these tag um, tuples in, a, in an array, sort, and then convert it back to a, uh, a string for hashing. I hope that made sense. All right, and then we're going to have to, of course, choose a hashing sharding function that will map a string selection such as this to probably an integer value. Um, and then we can, you know, modulo that to the number of web servers we, or the number of StatsD servers we have. In this case, we'll just you know, modulo it to, to two to choose one of two StatsD servers. All right, and then once we decide what StatsD server to send it to, we'll queue it up in probably a list of some sort. And then with concurrency, i.e. as quickly as possible, we'll have our proxy forward on those 
statsd metrics to the server. Because after all, statsd does calculations every 10 seconds, and we don't want to queue up stuff in the proxy longer than necessary. So hopefully we'll get to learn about some currency using threads or cores or, or whatever is appropriate, or whatever is possible in Rust. I think both are possible. So that would be great. And that's really the high-level plan. And we have arrived at the 10-minute mark. I'm trying to keep these videos short. Um, yeah, so I hope that was interesting enough. And we're going to get to learn some UDP, some string parsing, some error handling, some concurrency eventually, possibly some regular expressions. It's going to be good. Good learning project. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time when we can actually dive into some Rust code. See ya.